Gun violence is tanking American life expectancy. Hey friends, Dr. Abdul Al Sayed here. Before I go on, make sure to like, subscribe, tell your friends. We're talking about some important things here. I want to show you this graph from the Kaiser Family Foundation. What it shows is that one in three American families has experienced gun violence. One in three. That is absurd on its face. I want to dig in to the nature of gun violence. When we think about gun violence, it's easy to just think about homicide. It's easy to think about the rash of school shootings that we've experienced. And look, the fact that your mind goes there, it makes a lot of sense. They're shocking. They're obscene. But the bulk of gun violence, it's not homicide. It's, it's actually suicide. But before I go on, I want to make sure that anybody who's experiencing suicidal ideation, make sure that you dial 988. Help is available. Suicide is, of course, a mental health issue. But when there's a gun present, Suicidal ideation is a lot more likely to end up in suicide. Guns are by far the most deadly means of suicide. And that's where this gets super grim. Before I go on, I want to talk about something that's a bit more uplifting. And that's a message from our sponsors at the Marguerite Casey Foundation. How can we radically improve our democracy, economy, and society? Marguerite Casey Foundation provides unrestricted support to movement leaders in academia whose research encourages us to imagine how we might answer these questions. The Freedom Scholar Awards are a commitment to scholarship that fuels freedom movements led by black and indigenous people, migrants and queer folks, poor people, and people of color. Learn more about the Freedom Scholars and their powerful work at caseygrants.org. Now look, we talked about how the majority of gun deaths are deaths by suicide. But I want you to take a look at this next graph. What you're seeing here is life expectancy over the past several years, both in the U.S. and comparable countries. And what you'll note is that, well, life expectancy falls off a cliff in the United States. Now, you might imagine, well, that's COVID. Well, it's not just COVID because COVID was a global pandemic. Those other countries, they experienced COVID too. There's something unique about what's happening in America. And that goes back to what we've been talking about this whole video. It's gun violence. Because take a look at this next graph. What you're seeing here is gun deaths among U.S. kids. And since 2019, gun deaths have increased 50%. I want you to think about how we calculate life expectancy. Life expectancy is, in effect, the average age of death. When a young person dies, they contribute substantially more to the drop in life expectancy. So put this picture together. Gun deaths have increased 50% among kids. Life expectancy has dropped. And that drop in life expectancy is disproportionately deaths among children, and gun deaths represent 50% of that drop. Gun violence, regardless of what conservatives want to tell you, is not just a one-off issue that happens every once in a while. We give our thoughts and prayers and then walk away. No, the majority of gun deaths are deaths by suicide. Those deaths happen among young people. They've jumped 50%, and that has tanked American life expectancy. This is a collective challenge. It touches one in three families. And what's sad to me right now is that even though we keep watching as the tip of the iceberg keeps floating upward, these awful mass murders in places like schools or shopping centers, even though they keep happening, our elected officials keep telling us that we can't do anything about it. This is just what happens. Well, no, it's just what happens in an America where we've decided that access to a gun is more important than the lives of our children. That the ability to have any gun anywhere, anytime for anyone matters more than making sure that our children are safe, not just in their schools, but in their homes. That a kid who's having a rough time doesn't wind up dead because they have the means of committing and completing a suicide right there in their home. We can do better. We have to do better. And until we do, we're going to keep watching the shame of our failure to protect our kids.